that you're not in it. Okay, physical science time again. We're talking about matter. The objective, as you can see, is compare the structure and composition of matter. We just got done hearing about the labs of, <coughs> of um, our colleagues here. And we'll try to, I'll try to remember to talk about those as we go through the discussion, because I think it's important, as I said, for you to um, relate what you do in the lab to what you learn in here. But what is matter? Will you define matter for me? We love to do this, or at least this is how I like to start out discussions, is defining the main topic. What, what is matter, someone? Wes, what do you think matter is? I'll give you a little bit of a sentence frame. Anything. That's not the end of the sentence. That's just the start of the sentence. What, what, what should I fill in the rest? Anything? Cody? Okay. That. You got the second word right. There's a kind of, there's a, I don't know, there's kind of a, um, there's a definition we've talked about since the beginning of the year and that we've talked about before. That anything that has. Mass, okay, good, and yes, the way I've heard it and the way I've expressed it before is takes up space. Um, I, I guess there's no reason we can't just write mass and volume, yeah, because that is what takes up space means. Anything that has mass and volume. Anything that, Cody, you said something like anything that makes up a substance. Is that, is that or an object? Yeah, I don't. I don't think that's wrong. I just want. I wanted to get these two. Oh, oh no! New year, new me. Uh, anything that has mass and volume. Matter has mass and volume. So it would be a futile attempt for us to try and enumerate all the all the matter in the universe. That would be crazy. But what else is there in the universe besides matter? What else? What is in the, what in the universe is not matter? Air does have mass and take up space. So air is in it. Space. Okay. So there's other stuff in the universe. So th let's pretend that I have room to write the word the universe up here. So the observable universe. And part of what I mean by that is the stuff that is scientifically observable. Remember we had talked a little bit at the beginning of the year about things like um, ghosts. Do ghosts exist? Uh, I don't know. You can have opinions about that. But... It's not within the realm of science because it's not observable and testable. Um, so, matter is something that's in the observable scientific universe. What else is in the observable scientific universe? Space is in the observable scientific universe. So another thing that's in the observable universe is space. What else is there in the universe besides matter? Is that matter? Yeah? Is this, is this matter? The air is matter? Am I matter? Do I matter? Yes, of course I do. Um, it's not a coincidence that the word, that this word matter that we used to talk about the scientific principles of what we're going to talk about are related to the phrases like, do I matter? Um, because we think of this as like the real stuff the universe is made of. But what else is there? There's one other kind of very broad thing. Space kind of continuum. I, so time, maybe you could put time on this list perhaps. Let's just do it. Let's just do it. There's no one who's going to stop me. Space and time are both in the universe, yeah? We think maybe, this is just kind of a matter of interest, but we think maybe that time is more like a facet of human perspective than it is an actual thing. That might be true for space, too. But that's a little bit beyond the, the pay grade of physical science teachers. So let's talk about, I'm looking for one other specific thing that doesn't have mass, that doesn't take up space, but is observably in the universe that we've kind of talked a lot about this year, actually, already. In fact, that we spend the whole, what? What? Trying to, Trying to find it. It's okay, sound, it's a type of. Noise. Okay, noise is a type of sound, I would say, but sound is you gotta give me a little bit more. What else we commonly let's go with this a different attack. What else we commonly think of with sound? We there is this idea of sound, and there's also an idea of listening, <laughs> light, and both of those are kinds of energy. energy. Nice. And we did talk. A, I hope you remember that we talked a lot about energy. We talked about kinetic and potential energy. We talked about thermal energy. We talked about light energy. 
We didn't talk specifically about sound energy yet. We will later on in the year. But energy, this is, you remember how we defined energy? This is, this is a little bit of a side note. These are intended to be side notes, but they are important for you to know. Um, you remember how we defined energy? The ability to, you don't remember. I wish you did. This is really important. The ability to cause change. So a lot of times, it's, it's helpful for us to think of, this is the stuff that, in English, these would be the nouns. This, these are the processes. This, these are the, in English, the verbs. Yeah. Um, language is kind of a, the, the deeper you get into either of these things, the more useless language becomes. But we do our best. That's why it's important for you to know these vocabulary words, because in order to effectively use language to convey scientific thought, you have to know the language. And it really is kind of like a different language, like you might learn Spanish or Japanese or whatever, to learn the vocab words of science. You probably have more vocabulary in this class than you do in any other, because you need to know the words of science in order to communicate scientifically. Matter. Does it matter? Yes, it matters. It, something matters if it has mass and volume. Well, something is matter if it has mass and volume, but does energy matter? Yeah, meaning, meaning, I'm kind of trying to make this a little bit poetic, but meaning, um, is, it, is energy important? Because that's a lot of the times we use the word matter like that as a verb. We mean important. Because to us, this stuff is real. Right, your hoodie's real. And that's important to you to have a hoodie. Your mom's minivan. Your mom doesn't have a minivan. Your mom's, I don't know, Cadillac Escalade. Your mom's big suburban, that's what it is, um, matters. The leaves on the tree matter. Because to us, as human beings, this, is, this, this seems like the solid stuff of the universe. Now, there are, there are reasons why that you shouldn't put your like, trust in that, because you know, stuff does go bad. Stuff decays all the time. But effectively, that's how we think of matter. And we think of this as kind of more, yeah, like we think of this like you can't, you can't go to the Dollar General and buy a bottle of energy, you can buy a battery, but that's matter that will eventually exude energy. But this is, but both of these, my point, both of these are very important. The whole universe is here. This is everything. Um, so if you, if you name anything like uh, any, any, thing in the universe. It's probably one of these. It has to be. Um, un unless we get into ideas or things like I said, like ghosts. Ghost or um, capitalism or love. Those things are not scientifically observable in the way that energy and space and time and matter are. And so we kind of leave those for philosophy. Um, or what's the study of ghosts called? I don't know. Uh, now, within, now we're going to, this, that stuff is all kind of background. You should know that about energy. Within the, the realm of matter, there are different kinds of matter. Broadly speaking, matter can be divided into, and these I think are vocab words, so I'm going to have you come out with them. Yeah. What are the two broad categories of matter? Okay. No, that's a little too specific, but not very much too specific. Uh, okay, that's a little too specific, but not very much too specific. In fact, I'll write those up here. Heterogeneous mixture, homogeneous mixture, element, compound. There we go. Mixture and substance. Sometimes we specify pure substances. Um, meaning that they're unmixed. Pure meaning unmixed. They're purebred. They're unmixed. Like uh, if you have a purebred blue healer, I don't know why you would want one, but if you had a purebred blue, you know what, I, I take that back. Now that I've been watching Bluey, um, I like blue healers. I used to think they were the ugliest animals. Um, I still kind of do, but on but on Bluey they're not, and they're very cute. Um, so if you have a purebred, if you have a purebred blue healer, it means unmixed, right? If that blue healer then uh, begets offspring with a foxhound or something, now there those offspring are mixtures in a sense. I mean, I'm using this 
kind of metaphorically, but I think you, you get the picture of that. So this, these are the categories of matter. Categories of matter. And from here down, it's just a, a naming game. I mean, it's just, it's just a, a matter of definitions and examples. So define for me heterogeneous mixture. What's a heterogeneous mixture? Yeah, the materials that make it up can be distinguished. Like you can tell them apart. I'm not going to write down definitions. Um, I, I, we, I did write down the definition of matter, um, but you should have these in your vocab. So you, you should know already what a heterogeneous mixture is, but you're right. In order for us to talk about it, we need to define it. And the definition of a heterogeneous mixture is that the components that make up that mixture, the things that are mixed together, can be easily distinguished. So think about, uh, if you saw it, and if not, I'll describe it to you. Think about, um, before it was well mixed, think of, Oh, well, I hope that's the recording is still going. The screen just turned black. We'll find out later. Um, think about before it was well mixed. Think about the a pile of flour with some water in it. Could you could you distinguish? Could you not necessarily visually, but could you distinguish between the water and the flour? Yes, yeah, so it's a heterogeneous mixture. Hetero, the Greek root meaning what? I'm trying to help you remember. To me, it helps me remember words like this if I know what these words mean. What's hetero mean? If you are a heterosexual, you're someone who likes the other, the different sex. So this means different. Heterogeneous means it's made of. Genius means made from. It's kind of the same root word as Genesis from the Bible. Um, made from different stuff. It's a mixture that's made from different stuff that you can tell the difference. Whereas homogeneous, made from, it seems like it's made from the same stuff. Yeah. Uh, so that's how you can remember is that heterosexual is someone who likes the different sex. Homosexual is someone who likes the same sex. In this mixture, the things are easily differentiable. You can differ, uh, you can differentiate between them. And this one, it seems to be all the same throughout. Different, same. That's the best way to remember them. Um, and they're not really that easy to tell apart if you don't think of it that way because they both start with H and you can't just think, oh, the H one, is, no, that doesn't work. So homogeneous and heterogeneous mixtures. Give me some examples. What's a heterogeneous mixture? We're going to go a little bit further down into this um, before we do our examples, I guess. Uh, what are some types of heterogeneous? What are some ways that heterogeneous mixtures can behave? Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah, so a, a mixture of oil and water would be a heterogeneous mixture. They can't mix. I mean, you can kind of get them to, or if you emulsify them, they can. But, so yeah, oil and water. Let's put that. Oil and water. Oil and water. Okay. What's another heterogeneous mixture? It usually, when we've said this before, we usually think of something specific like Italian salad dressing. You know about Italian salad dressing. Maybe I should say Italian salad dressing. I don't know the right way to pronounce it. But that's basically oil and water with like some salt and herbs and stuff in it. So oil and water is a heterogeneous mixture. What's another heterogeneous mixture? Is it Eliana's beverage there that I hope is just water with ice in it? A, heter a heterogeneous mixture or a homogeneous mixture? Hmm. I'm really interested to hear you say that. So they're both the same thing, right? They're both the same chemical compound. In fact, you might even say that it is a pure substance. It's just water. I mean, I'm sure, I'm sure because you probably got that from something like a tap. Maybe it's filtered, but it probably isn't pure water. You're not drinking distilled water and distilled water ice. Um, but we can say it's roughly the same chemical compound. But is it a homogeneous or heterogeneous? I would say it's a heterogeneous mixture because you can tell the ice from the water, can't you? Could you distinguish between the ice and the water? Is there a way for you to get the ice and the water separate? Could you do that mechanically? Could you pick out the ice with your hands? Sure you could, it'd be foolish. So let's put that, ice and water. That's a heterogeneous mixture. Even though they're the same thing, that's a heterogeneous mixture. What's another example of a heterogeneous mixture? I'm gonna, I'm gonna give you one because it's on the test and I wanna make sure that you know it. Uh, some kinds of rock. I'm gonna put granite. Oh, 
trying to think if I have a rock handy that will work good for this. Maybe one of these little guys. No, not that little guy. I could use this false rock. Oh, it looks pretty realistic though, right? Yeah, don't don't look, talk about the writing on the bottom. But if you look at this rock, you can see, I think they kind of look like scratches when you get up close, but it's supposed to represent a piece of igneous rock where you can see the different crystals in it. And that um, the fact that you can see those, it's a mixture. It's a heterogeneous mixture. Uh, and part of the point is that even though this whole thing is solid, it can still be a mixture. Concrete on the sidewalk is a mixture. There's sand and what's called aggregate, larger pieces of rock, and cement. Those are all mixed together, and that can be a mixture. So uh, I'll put up here also concrete. It can be a solid. It doesn't have to be a liquid. Supreme Pizza, your, your boy DiGiorno and his Supreme Pizza, that's a heterogeneous mixture. You could pick off the pepperonis if you didn't like them, right? That means it's a heterogeneous mixture. Oh, Peyton. <laughs> I meant to hit West, so that wasn't a very good shot. I'm sorry, Peyton. I thought it would be funny if you guys thought I was throwing a rock at West. It's a little less funny if you think I'm throwing a rock at Peyton because it, uh, I'm really sorry, Peyton. Throw it back. The, the, I'm sorry, Peyton. I'm going to throw it at Cody this time. I am going to hit him. The, now listen, for the record, the rock is actually a squishy toy. <laughs> it doesn't hurt very bad. Uh, but it's funny because it looks like, doesn't it look kind of like a real rock? And so then when you get mad, you can say, Cody, what? I'm going to throw a rock at you. And then, gosh dang it, <laughs> Lucas. Maybe, maybe, uh, maybe I shouldn't. I think the problem is I called my shot. I shouldn't have said I'm going to throw it at Lucas or Cody. I should have said I'm going to throw it over there at one of the boys. And that one didn't hit any of them at all. So the first one, I meant to hit Wes, hit Peyton. Second one, meant to hit Cody, didn't hit Lucas. The rock throwing contest was a failure. Um, can you can you try to throw it back to me? Maybe maybe it's a hard maybe it's a hard rock to throw. Rocks can be heterogeneous mixtures. Can rocks also be homogeneous mixtures? Yeah, let's give some examples of this. Maybe another rock could be a homogeneous mixture. Um, let me think of an example. A lot of rocks are pure substances, and so for them to be a homogeneous mixture would be. Let me put. I'm going to put mica up here. Um, which actually is a mineral, but the, the mixture is the same throughout. It would be a, a specific arrangement of one compound, silicate, and another compound, potassium, and they're mixed together. They're in a solution. And we also call homogeneous mixtures solutions. But there are also things like uh, colloids in here, which uh, an example of a colloid uh, is like whipped cream. So whipped cream, you, you, have you experienced whipped cream before? Yeah, yeah whipped cream's pretty good. Um, whipped cream, depending on the kind of whipped cream, yeah, you might see bubbles in it, which I guess would technically make it a heterogeneous mixture, but usually the whipped cream, if it's smooth, counts as a homogeneous mixture, because you can't tell uh, the, it, I mean, it's pretty complicated, whipped cream is, because it's made of water and fat and sugar and air, but you can't tell by looking at it, which part is the water and which part is the air. My coffee, I don't have any coffee left, but coffee is a lot of times a homogeneous mixture. Milk is usually a homogeneous mixture. In fact, a lot of milk will say, like you'll get a carton of milk and it'll say homogenized milk on it. And homogenized means it was made into a homogeneous mixture. If you get, does anyone have a dairy cow? I know there's a load of cows around here, but does anyone have a dairy cow or have any experience with dairy cows or dairy goats? If you get milk right from the source, that milk will separate. Like if you just let it sit there, the, the whey and the milk and the milk fat or the cream will all separate out, which is a kind of suspension. And suspensions, suspensions can also be this is now it's going to look like a crazy person. But suspensions can also be heterogeneous. But a suspension is any mixture that will settle out. That over time, the parts will separate. Um, like uh, the classic example is pond water. If you go scoop up some water in the pond, over time, the, the like 
sediment, the sand and stuff will drop to the bottom. Maybe the seaweed or I don't know, pond weed will float to the top, moss will float to the top, and there might be some like sticks and stuff kind of in the middle. But that that settling out, it makes a suspension. The Italian salad dressing is a suspension. The, the chunks, the pepper and the, uh, I don't know what else is in there, pepper and herbs and stuff will eventually settle to the bottom. That's parsley. Yeah, that's really cool. I, I think, I know what you're talking about, that if you have um, different temperatures of water, even though they're the same substance, different temperatures of water, like our ice and water, they will separate out to some extent. And then eventually over time, it's almost like an opposite suspension, because over time they will all become the same temperature and they'll all mix together um, in a homogeneous way. But we also call these homogeneous mixtures solutions. And one example was like when in Peyton and Tommy's lab, when we put the, a crystal of solid potassium permanganate in the water and stirred it, it became a solution. And one way we can tell solutions from things like colloids or suspensions is that if we shine a light through a solution, the light goes right through. If we shine a light through a colloid, the, the, it, the light scatters. And so maybe you've seen, um, like if it's foggy out and you turn on a flashlight, you can see the beam of the flashlight. You can see, it seems like you can see the light itself. That's the Tyndall effect. That's the Tyndall effect. And the reason that happens is because in, let's, let's think of two scenarios here. We've got, in both cases, we've got a flashlight. And in this one on the top, it's just normal air. So, I don't know, here's a burglar. It's a cat burglar, so I'm going to draw ears on him. Um, and on, in this one, same thing, is a cat burglar. So the cat burglar is not the problem. He's, he's one of the... Uh, Control or so one of the constants, not a variable. So in, in this one, and here's your eye here. This is you with your eye. In the top one, so the bottom one is going to have a suspension of, I don't know, it could be dust particles, it could be water particles, it doesn't matter, but the bottom one is some kind of, technically a colloid, it's some kind of mixture. It's got some, it's got some particles in the air. In this one, if you turn the flashlight on, you just see the flashlight light him up like that. But in this one, every the light goes out and every particle it hits can, each particle can reflect the light back. And so you see some light reflected back from particles. And so you end up seeing the beam itself because the light is being scattered by these particles. So it does light up the guy, but it also lights up the particles. And you see those particles being lit up, and that allows you to see the beam. So you're still not actually seeing the beam of light. You're seeing the particles, but it makes the light beam seem cohesive because the light as it touches the particles is showing the shape of the beam, which you normally wouldn't see. That's the Tyndall effect. And that is exhibited in colloids and uh, to some extent suspensions, because some, to some extent, extent suspensions are colloids. Now, all of this matter, oh, sorry, we didn't talk at all about pure substances yet, sorry. Um, pure substances can be either elements or compounds. Where, how do we know if it's an element? Where do we find a list of the elements, for, for instance? Yeah, these are the, this is the periodic table of the elements, and elements, and we'll talk more about them in the future, which is why I almost skipped over them and why we don't need to talk about them very much now, but elements are basically the most, uh, they're the, the smallest piece of matter that can still has the properties of that matter. So if you have gold, let's say we had a mixture of gold and silver, what we would call an alloy. Someone has mixed together molten gold and molten silver, and it comes out with a brick of the alloy electrum, which is what we call an alloy of gold and silver. Um, we could then separate that back out into gold and silver through various processes. We can separate it into gold and silver. But the gold, we can't separate any further. And the silver, we can't separate any further. These are the fundamental building blocks of matter as we know it, and so we call those elements. So they can't be separated out anymore. Air is a mixture. Air is a mixture of mostly nitrogen with a little bit of oxygen and carbon dioxide and water, etc. Actually, it's quite a bit of oxygen, but a little bit of carbon dioxide and water, etc. Um, but we can separate that out. We can separate that mixture by using its properties, and that would give us the elements. Nitrogen, oxygen. We can separate the carbon dioxide into carbon and oxygen. But the, uh, those elements are the fundamental uh, 
building blocks of matter. And when I say fundamental, I mean that they can't be broken up any further by chemical means. We can't use, we can't use chemical processes to break them down any further. Whereas a compound, and you, I want to make sure you know the difference between this and like a hetero, or sorry, a homogeneous mixture. A compound is a set or a fixed ratio of elements. So for example, um, CO2 or H2O. Those little twos there, they don't have to be a two, but in this case, both of these have twos. The twos mean, they tell us the ratio of, in this case, carbon to oxygen. For every one carbon, how many oxygens do I have in carbon dioxide? Two. For, in water, for every one oxygen, how many hydrogens do I have? Two. The, the number goes with the, the element before it, and this tells us the ratio of those elements. And that's why this is different from a homogeneous mixture. So, also that they're chemically bonded, but the, in a homogeneous mixture, like your potassium permanganate solution, or like your salt solution in your lab, it can be any rate. Like you could put in a gram of salt with a liter of water, or you could put in a cup of salt with a liter of water like you did. And either way, it's still salt water. Like we would say this is, maybe we could say this is more concentrated, or this is stronger salt water, but either way, it's still a solution of salt and water. Same thing with your permanganate. We can put one crystal in, or we can put a handful, of, we wouldn't want to actually touch it, but we can put a scoop of crystals in. And either way, it's still a solution of potassium permanganate. It's still a homogeneous mixture of potassium permanganate. But the potassium permanganate itself has this specific ratio, and if it didn't have this specific ratio, it wouldn't be potassium permanganate. Same thing with the water. You know that water is H2O. Do you know what H2O2 is? Anyone? Yeah, it's hydrogen peroxide is what we call it. Have you ever heard of hydrogen peroxide? What do you use hydrogen peroxide for? It? Yeah, you, you can put it on a cut to disinfect it. You can use it to get blood out of really anything, actually. Um, you can use it to bleach your hair. Um, in fact, that's, I think that's what they use when someone... If like if Lucas went in and said he wanted to have pink hair tomorrow, it's not you can't just dye Lucas's hair pink because it's already dark. You'd have to first bleach it with hydrogen peroxide and then dye it pink. Please don't do that, Lucas. If it, it, my opinion, you shouldn't. But um, the, it has hydrogen and oxygen just like water. It has the same elements, but it's not water. Another or a veterinary use of hydrogen peroxide is that if your dog eats something it's not supposed to you can give it some hydrogen peroxide and it'll throw up for 48 hours and it won't have any of the stuff that it ate in its tummy anymore. Because this is not water. You see my point? That even though it's hydrogen and oxygen, just like water, the ratio being different means that it's a completely different substance with completely different properties. And that's the thing we're going to talk about next, are these properties. Oops, but I do want to spell it right. Properties. So substances can have chemical or physical, or I'm sorry, all substances have both chemical and physical properties. And with these properties come changes, chemical and physical changes. Chemical properties determine how a substance, we usually talk about this just with substances, either elements or compounds, not usually with mixtures, how a substance uh, reacts chemically. And physical properties are those attributes that we can just see about it. Like the, uh, a physical property of Cody's hoodie is that it's white. Color is usually a physical property. These are the attributes of a substance. Gold is yellow. Um, iron is ferromagnetic. Those are, those are physical properties. They're just attributes about it. And chemical properties are things that tell us about how it changes when it reacts. Iron can rust. That's a chemical property. Now, there's also these physical and chemical changes. Like, the process of rusting itself is a chemical change. Copper can oxidize. That's a chemical change. If I, if I have a... I don't have... Oh, hmm. I'm trying to think of something. Okay. No, I don't want to do that. I want to do it with one of these blank ones. If I have this ramrock... This has some physical properties. Give me one physical property of the ramrock. 
Green. Okay, give me another one. There's black on the other side. Okay, yeah, it has a certain, I don't know, you texture, right? Uh, um, it has a shape right now, rectangular, really technically rectangular prism. It does have a depth. Um, what? It has a certain density. Yeah. Um, those are all physical properties. Is it made of a substance? Is paper a substance? No, not really. Paper is more of a homogeneous mixture. Really, you could say even with the ink on it, it's a heterogeneous mixture. Um, but paper is not a substance. But it's made of substances, and those substances have chemical properties too. If I if I took my my lighter and lit this on fire, would it burn? Yeah, and that's a chemical property. This burns, right? Would would this pin burn? I, maybe I shouldn't have used that example, but probably mostly this is plastic. It would probably mostly melt in the fire. That's a different property. Um, but the chemical property that this will combine with oxygen to make carbon dioxide and a little bit of water, and that's called burning, is a chemical property. So this has chemical and physical properties. A chemical change would be what? I just gave you an example. Give me an example of a chemical change this could undergo. Yeah, burning. You could, you could write that down. An example of a chemical change is burning. Could I make this undergo a physical change? How could I physically change this right now? Yeah, I could. There we go. Now you don't get this grammar. But uh, tearing it in half is a, is a physical change. Crumbling it up, changing its shape is a physical change. Because it's still the same stuff, right? Is it still a ramrock philosophically? I don't know. Maybe not. I'll let you see if you can turn it in still. But it's still made of the same stuff. It's still a homogeneous mixture of all kinds of different compounds. But I can change its shape, and that's a physical change. Yeah, we are. And that, actually, one of the reasons for things like this, I like to steer clear of examples that are biological, because biological systems are extremely complex. So like, is you, are you a homogeneous or a heterogeneous mixture or a substance or an element? Probably mostly a heterogeneous mixture, but it's kind of hard. I mean, it's kind of hard to talk about with biological stuff because they're so complicated. Yeah. So things are dissolved in like water, so that can be physical. Great question. Um, dissolution is considered a physical property, and, and so dissolution is also a physical state. When something dissolves, that's a physical change. It's still what it is. It's just been dissolved in the water. Um, another thing you should know, and you should write this down, that uh, changes in state are always physical changes. You know what I mean by changes in state? What? Mm, kind of. It's more melting, boiling. When something goes from being a, a solid to a liquid, or a liquid to a gas, or a liquid to a, a plasma, I don't know. It's change in state is always a physical change. Because a lot of people get confused. They think um, that since it's melting, it must be a chemical change, but that just isn't it. It, remember Eliana's ice bar. Some of that ice that was in there has now, God bless you, melted, right? It's become liquid water, but they're still both water. The, the real key is if a chemical change happened, it changed from one thing to another, like in Peyton and Tommy's lab. It was potassium permanganate dissolved in water, and then afterward it was something completely different with different properties. And the evidence for that in that case was that it was pink before and afterward it was clear. Do you have questions about physical and chemical changes? Or physical and chemical properties, either, or the kinds of matter. Does this, does any of this make sense to you? I'm really sorry. If you're someone who I threw something at and I hit you, I'm really sorry that that happened to you. Um, it was an accident. I, I mean, it, there, it was deliberate for me to hit someone, but it wasn't you. Bye.